Welcome to a video on elements, compounds and mixtures uh, which could be used by students studying for an IGCSE in chemistry. Um, so we're going to start off uh, by defining uh, what we mean by elements, compounds and mixtures. And as you progress through school, uh, you may have met different definitions for these terms. And that's not overly helpful. So I'm just going to focus on one definition for elements, and that's a substance that contains only one type of atom. And you might be thinking at this point, well, actually, what's the difference between these atoms? Um, and that's covered in a later video, what's actually inside these atoms that makes them different. Uh, but for now, all you need to know is that, for example, the element of aluminium, which is displayed down here, Al, which is the symbol for aluminium, only contains one type of atom, aluminium atoms. And they're different from silicon. And within a, a, a sample of silicon, you've only got one type of atom, silicon atoms. And they're slightly different to the atoms that are in aluminium. And those in turn are slightly different to the elements in magnesium. And the atoms in sodium. The atoms in lithium. The atoms in beryllium. So this is all you need to know. is a substance that contains only one type of atom. You also need to know mm, not all the symbols. I was about to say most of the symbols. But you don't really need to know... Um, most of the symbols, um, but you should definitely know at least the first 20. So that's all the way up to calcium, so that's hydrogen, helium, the second row here, the third row here, and then potassium and calcium. And you should also know a few others. Uh, copper is Cu, zinc, Zn, um, and a few others down here. We've got silver, Ag, and gold, Au. And you'll notice that every single element has been given a symbol. And sometimes the symbol is just one letter, in which case we use a capital letter. And sometimes it's two letters, in which case the first letter is a capital and the second letter is a lowercase letter. Now, this is the periodic table, obviously, as I've just mentioned. And this contains all the elements that we know about today. And... Recently, uh, these elements down here at the bottom, which have got three letter symbols down here, element 113, element 115, 117 and 118, have been given their official names. They're given these three symbol or three letter symbols while they are awaiting being named because they've only just been discovered. Uh, but now they actually do have proper names and they have proper symbols. And this one here, element 118, has the symbol OG. And this periodic table down here contains all different classifications for the elements. You can see here that these elements over here are the alkali metals. Um, these elements over here have been designated as transition metals. Uh, but you really only need to know um, the distinction between metals and non-metals. And the metals are found on the left-hand side of the periodic table. So metals are one type of element, and these are everything which is left of this little staircase, which is between boron and hydrogen. So that staircase there separates metals from non-metals, according to the IGCSE specification. So all over here... We have metals, and on the other side, we have non-metals. And you might look at properties of these metals and properties of these non-metals in your lessons. The final thing I'm going to mention about elements is that all elements have a specific and sharp melting and boiling points. Um, so each element melts and boils at a specific temperature.
temperature. And that comes into greater significance later on when we compare elements, compounds and mixtures together. Now, let's have a look at the definition for the other two compounds and mixtures. So, compounds contain two or more different types of atom and these atoms are bonded together. So you might be thinking, well, elements all have symbols. Do compounds have symbols? And um, yeah, they do. And hopefully you'll learn how to write the symbols for compounds in your lessons. And there's a video on that, uh, which I've made before. And the symbols for compounds are just the symbols of the elements put together. Now, there's a few complicated rules that you need to learn. But, for example, the symbol for magnesium oxide, which is a compound made when we combine magnesium with oxygen, we make magnesium oxide, we write the symbol down as MgO. So that shows us that this compound has magnesium and oxygen, and we've bonded them to the two atoms together, if you like. Now, you might be thinking, well, maybe isn't that a mixture, magnesium oxide? Well, it's not a mixture because they're, the two different types of atom are bonded together. In a mixture, you have different types of atom, but they're not necessarily bonded together. So they're distinguishable. So we'll have here two or more different types of atom not bonded together. So for example, um, magnesium, whilst magnesium oxide is a compound, the mixture is just when we have a lump of magnesium surrounded by oxygen. And that would be a mixture. Now I mentioned earlier about the boiling and melting points of elements. Compounds also melt at specific points. They also boil, sorry, boil at specific points. So I think that's worth noting down. All have specific boiling, and I'm just going to abbreviate boiling to a B, B and M points. Okay, so they melt and boil at a specific temperature, whereas mixtures melt and boil over a range So that's very useful to us as chemists because we can see if a substance we've got is pure. If we've got a pure compound, it will melt at a very specific temperature, a sharp temperature. Okay, it won't melt at any other temperatures. Okay, but a mixture will melt over a range of temperatures. And we use this to distinguish. Certainly, when we're doing quite high level chemistry, into whether we've got a compound on our hat or in our hands or a mixture. Now we're going to look at a pictorial representation of elements, compounds and mixtures. So here are our pictures and what we've got to do is we've got to decide if these diagrams show us elements, compounds or mixtures. So you might like to pause the video and have a go at the question yourself before I answer it. And we'll start up here. Right. Um, so each of these little spheres, uh, well, we've got certainly a substance here and a different substance here. Now, the coloured spheres tell you one type of atom. So here we've got one type of atom bonded to an identical atom. And that on its own here is an element. 
But over here, we've got a different type of atom bonded to another identical atom. So what we've got here are two different elements in the same area. They're not bonded together. There's no bond here. So that is a mixture. It's a mixture of elements. Ah, now within box B, we've only got one type of atom, the red atom. So that must be an element, as we've only got one type of atom. And in box C, you might be thinking, well, that's bound to be a compound. Well, let's have a look. Right, we've got the red atom here, and that looks like it's bonded to the blue atom. Again, we've got the red atom bonded to a blue atom. A blue atom bonded to a red atom. And all these species here are identical. One red bonded to one blue. And as we've got different atoms bonded to each other, this will be a compound. Now, you might be thinking, well, which one of these is pure? Well, this one is definitely pure. It's only got one type of atom present. What about the compound? Okay, well that is also pure. Okay, because even though we've got different elements, they're bonded together. So you've actually only got one substance here. You might call that magnesium oxide. And we've only got magnesium oxide within this box. So that is also pure. Pure magnesium oxide, for example. And in this mixture, well, it's not pure. We've got two different species. We've got element red and element blue, and they're not bonded together. So we would say this is not a pure substance. There are four more examples at the bottom of the page. So we could have a go at these. Um, in the first box here, we've got a red atom bonded to a white atom. Red atom bonded to a white atom. Red atom bonded to a white atom. Looks rather similar to this box over here. And that's a compound because we've got two different elements or two different types of atom bonded together. That's a compound. And it's a pure compound. Hmm, this looks a bit more complicated. We've got two reds bonded together and each one of those is bonded to a white. Two reds each one bonded to a white. Two reds, each one bonded to a white. Ah, all the, all the sort of particles in here are identical. We've got two reds, each one bonded to one white. So again, this is a compound. Box three. Hmm, right. Uh, we've got a red atom bonded to a red atom. Got a red atom bonded to a red atom, red atom bonded to a red atom, but we've also got two white atoms bonded together. And so this, very much like example A, is a mixture. And it's a mixture of elements. And the final example, right, okay. We've got a red atom, red atom, and then we've got a red atom bonded to two white atoms. Red atom bonded to two white atoms. Red atom bonded to two white atoms. Oh, what a mess. Okay, this is a mixture as well. And that concludes the first part of this video.